Hey, it's Kyle with Clawhammer Supply. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make aged peach pie moonshine. Um, so of course you're gonna need some moonshine, some spirits. You can use any kind of white unaged whiskey that you prefer. I am gonna be using this Old Smoky White Lightning uh, moonshine. This is 100 proof. They make this specifically for making cocktails and mixing with other stuff. So it's a higher proof, um, which is good because we'll be diluting it with some juice. Okay, as far as juice goes, I'm gonna be experimenting with two new recipes in this video. The recipe I've always used uses peach white grape juice, like actually in jugs. And you can, you can pick that up from Walmart, you can pick that up anywhere. But recently I discovered that Welch's makes a white grape peach concentrate. So I'm gonna be trying that out in one version of this recipe. And then also, you can find this stuff, it's called Lose a Peach uh, Nectar at uh, like health food stores and whatnot. Um, it's kind of pricey, but it tastes delicious on its own. I mean, like it's seriously good stuff. And I'm gonna make a batch with that as well. Moving on, we'll talk about the spices here. So we've got some dried peaches. I think we have eight to 10 um, big chunks of dried peaches here. We have some wood chips, so a tablespoon to two tablespoon of wood chips. Um, and I mentioned it at the top of the video here that we're gonna be aging this recipe. The peaches are gonna take some time to infuse the alcohol with their flavor. That's gonna take at least a week. I would recommend probably taking a week and then just giving it a little sip to see how concentrated it is. And then if that's to your liking, then you move on. We have an eighth of a teaspoon of the following. Um, cinnamon, ginger, orange, and cloves. We have about a half an inch of um, vanilla, like a stick, vanilla, dried vanilla bean. Um, and then I have in there about a quarter teaspoon of pink peppercorn. If you didn't catch all that or that didn't make sense, just look for the link below in this uh, video description and I'll point you to an article where I will list all of that out. Alternatively, those ingredients are roughly what we use in our peach pie moonshine spice kits, and I will link to these as well in the description. The first step here is that I'm actually going to take these peaches and I'm going to cut them up into smaller chunks, basically so there's more surface area for the alcohol to come into contact with. There are two reasons. I'm not using fresh peaches. Number one, peaches kind of tend to disintegrate um, pretty quickly when you use fresh peaches and you end up with like kind of a lot of chunky, slimy stuff um, in the mix. That's why I've never used something like this before. It's kind of cloudy, but it, there is some um, pulp in there, I guess, but there's not much. But I'm gonna try it out and see how I like it. The people who really have been around the block and they've done this, a number of times and they've learned from people in the past especially like mountain folk who do this kind of stuff what they'll tell you is that the best peach moonshine is actually made with what are called indian peaches or blood peaches they're generally not something you can just pick up at a grocery store you have to go to an orchard or go to a farmer's market or something like that to find those. They're super hard. They're not really for eating. They're for baking. They look blood red on the inside. And if you're using the fresh peach like that, which I don't have right now because it's the middle of December, you just cut slits in the side of the peach and then you would put that in a mason jar and you'd leave that set for as long as six months or so. All right, so I have my peaches here. What I'm going to do is just pop the peaches into my kettle. And then I'm going to put the uh, spices in there as well. All right, next I'm going to add the moonshine. And like I said, I'm experimenting here in this recipe. So I'm going to make this uh, batch a bit bigger than I normally do just to see if I can extend the spices a little bit, make a bit bigger of a batch without diluting the flavors too much. Um, I'm going to be adding six cups 
of alcohol. All right, I'm gonna pop a lid on this and I'm gonna leave this set for about one week and then we'll come back and we'll wrap this up. Hey, uh, it's only been uh, 24 hours actually since I last put the ingredients in the pot here um, and it occurred to me two things actually. Um, one, I don't wanna leave the alcohol in this container for a week despite the fact that it has a lid on it. I'm worried that too much is gonna evaporate out of it. And two, I made a mistake when I added the ingredients. Um, I should have used a muslin bag for the wood chips and the spices. That's what I normally do. One of these guys right here. Um, I did not do that. That's okay, that's fine. This is gonna be just a test run for, for new recipe styles anyway. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to strain the ingredients here and um, I am going to pull out the peach chunks. I'm gonna set the wood chips aside and the other spices aside. Like I said, this is just an experiment here. Um, this is not the normal recipe because I'm using two different peach ingredients. I ain't worried about it. What is gonna be kind of a pain though, is uh, pulling the peaches out of this strainer and not the other ingredients. It's all right. I might get some wood chips in here, that's fine. I think really what I wanna leave out are the cloves and there's some pepper in here. Vanilla would probably be okay to transfer over. All right, well that's that. Um, I'm going to now leave the set for the rest of the week and then we'll come back and I will add some different types of peach juice to this and we'll figure out which is gonna be the best. All right, it's been a week. Everything's done infusing, so I'm gonna wrap this up. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is strain the ingredients, the peaches and whatnot. I'm actually gonna put them back in. I ended up with a couple of wood chips in here. I didn't end up with much wood in there and it's gonna just continue to add some more flavor. However, I don't want it in my like finished jar. And like I said, I usually separate these ingredients in a muslin bag and I don't have to do this process of manually picking stuff out, but uh, I forgot to do that. So we're gonna pick through this one last time and just get these last few wood chips out of here. I do want the peaches in the jar. They'll continue to provide flavor and you know, they're not gonna make anything bitter um, or you know, like overly oaky or anything like the other ingredients might. So they're a nice addition. Okay, so I'm gonna set the peaches aside here. Generally, this much alcohol makes about three mason jars of finished product, six cups. I'm making two different kinds, uh, so I'm not really sure how I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do. I, I know one's gonna be all one type of juice and one's the other. I don't know, maybe I'll do a mix for the one in the middle. But what I do need to do is split the infused moonshine into the jars evenly. Oh, got a wood chip in there. A little bit in that one, a little bit in that one. I have about two cups in each, so 400, 500 milliliters it looks like in, in each one of these. This has been in the fridge, I let it thaw out. So I'm gonna top this off for the most part. I'm gonna leave some room to add some peaches back in. And I'm gonna do the same with this. Give this guy a little shake. All right, I'm gonna set this guy aside and I'll figure out what I wanna do with that here in a second. Just give both of these guys a little shake. That one's strong.
Oh, yeah. All right. Clear winner. There's a clear winner here. I've always really liked this stuff. I've bought this from the um, grocery store before. It is really delicious. Um, so I thought it might make a, a nice peach uh, moonshine. It's just not strong enough though. Um, you know, like when you drink this on, on its own, tons of like fresh peach flavor. Really nice, but it's not very strong. Obviously not as strong as the concentrates are gonna be. That's just not doing it for me. This, however, yeah. It's sweeter, it's on the sweeter side, but it, the peach really comes through as well. Um, and with this recipe, what I generally do is I will toss the peaches back in here and I'll leave these set even longer. Like I'll leave them set another few weeks before we're actually drinking them and the peach just continues to infuse into the alcohol. This is definitely something that gets better with age up to a point. Um, obviously you wanna keep it refrigerated, but at this stage, this is way better than this is. So what I'll do with this last year, I think, is um, I'll do like a 50-50 mix of this and the uh, peach nectar. Do a good, good amount of that, probably two thirds of the can, I'd say. And then I'll top it off with this. And then I'll add the peach back to all of these. All right, and that's that. Um, aged peach moonshine. I'll probably wrap this video up and then I'll come back with a separate video in a few weeks and I'll let you know after aging which one tastes the best. At this point, I am gonna throw this in the refrigerator. You know, I'm not sure what the final ABV on this is and what the ABV would need to be for it not to sort of like spoil. So I'm gonna refrigerate it. I'll come back in a few weeks with another video and I'll let you know which one is the definitive uh, winner. Thanks for watching. See ya.